guys, welcome back to the Digital Bunch. Today we're going to be showing you 10 tips in 3ds Max. Now we're really curious to see how many of them you actually know. So this idea came about when we got together and we started talking about hacks and tips that we recently learned. And what I realized is there's a lot of these little different features that not everyone really knows. So today we're going to present a bunch of them and we're curious to see if you actually knew them yourself. Let's jump right in. Number one, let's say you want to add a plane or light into your scene. When you usually put them in your scene and adjust them, they are only on the X, Y axis. Instead of rotating the light and having to do this manually, you can use auto grid. With auto grid, you can snap your plane or light to any face of another object in your scene. Number two, in an interior scene, when you're orbiting and a wall obstructs your view, you can use the back face call function. You can select the faces of the wall that you don't want to see in your view looking from the outside. Then you go to edit polygons and click flip. Once you have that, right-click Object Properties and select Back Face Cull. This will allow you to hide all the wall faces with flipped normals from the camera's perspective. Number 3. By default, in interiors, to avoid having black parts in your viewport such as this ceiling here, you can go to Views, Viewport Per View Settings, and on the Lighting and Shadow section in Default Lights, you can activate two lights. This way, in the viewport, you can see better those areas. Number 4. Now, let's move to Dot Loop. If you come across a situation in which you need to select every second face, select just two polygons, then on the Panel Tiles, go to the Modeling tab, on the Modify selection, you click on the Dot Loop tool. This will automatically create a selection of all the elements you need. Number 5. Select and Place. Instead of aiming with every object to make sure they're not flying, try to use this tip. First, move the axis to the bottom of the object. You can press Alt-Shift-5 to do so. If that doesn't work on your object, you can find this option here. On this hierarchy tab, click on Effect Pivot Only and move it to the bottom of the object. Once you have that, go to the Select and Place feature. This will make it snap to the face of the adjacent object. Now you're sure that the object will be perfectly placed in your scene. Number 6. This is a kind of two hacks in one. Have you ever noticed how it's difficult to control this movement when you want to move the vertices along the edges? To make this precise, you can select the edge constraint in the Edit Geometry section. Now, a common issue you might run into is that your material will also shrink as you decrease the size of the object. To avoid this, you can select the vertices and check the Preserve UVs and it will keep the UV maps from stretching. Number 8. Here's a tip on how to create a correct looking brick arc. The problem with this is that the brick material won't follow the shape unless you click on the Generate Mapping Coordinates checkbox. After that, just use the UVX4 modifier to resize the map. This will apply for any material that needs to follow the shape defined by the Sweep modifier. Number 9. 
If you need to switch between inches and centimeters in your scene a lot, keep in mind this hack. You can type your measurements into this input box with the unit and it will automatically convert it to the unit that you set up for your scene. Number 10. When you want to use a color selector to change colors and materials, this view is kind of limited. But if you go to File, Preferences, in the General tab, you can change the Corona Improved Picker. This gives you a more advanced color selector. And this brings us to the end of our video for today. So let us know if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscribe, and see you next time. Bye!